All right, for our fantasy landscape assignment, assignment number one. Remember, you can go to our course and go under um, the modules for the course and the assignments and look up the, the PDF assignment sheet, which talks about it all. It's helpful to see past student examples. And so what is required of you? Well, for this assignment, we need to make an original landscape composition. And we're going to do that by sketching. And it's completely up to you what this landscape should be. But the requirements are that you need to use five or more references to build it. We're going to build it out of other people's pixels. That those five or more references are 10 megapixels or larger in size. So that we can really print this thing out at least 11 by 14 inches, 350. And if we aim for that, then we could really print it out larger. And that the end product, as much as we can as we're learning these compositing skills, tries to match its own logic, its own reality. Right? So that the lighting kind of all makes sense internally, the, the coloring makes sense internally, the atmosphere, the depth, all of that. But it starts with a sketch. And you can see that the sketch got changed a little bit, or alterations were made, and that's natural. Right? But the reason we always start with a sketch is because we need to control what this looks like. We don't let our reference control what we're doing. So, this is what we do first. In your sketchbook, go ahead and get that out, and I'll do it digitally up here so you can see. I'm going to open up Photoshop, save this, open a new file, and I'm going to use my tablet to pretend this is my sketchbook. Come on, come on. There we go. Photoshop's going a little slower than I want. So I'm going to do just a default Photoshop size file, which is seven by five inches, the size of a like a birthday card, and um, 300 pixels per inch. That's fine. I'm going to use a brush. And I like to, to draw in like a non-photo blue in Photoshop. And I like to use a pressure sensitive brush, hard round, pressure sensitive. Here we go. So this is my sketchbook. Let's say this is the seam of my sketchbook, spiral bound. Okay, the first thing I want to do is I need to brainstorm. So assignment one. And I'm going to let you guys do a lot of this for me. So what kind of um, weather, let's start there, would it be fun for you guys to see me demonstrate in a fantasy landscape? Okay, so stormy, right? Now there can be lots of different types of storms, right? Depending on what the environment is. So next, what, what is the ecosystem? Is it desert? Is it frozen? Is it swamp? I always feel like I'm in an improv troupe doing this. So ecosystem, it's a stormy swamp. Okay, now we get to talk about some other things. What time of day is it going to be? Because this is going to be a background, a fantasy landscape from a particular time. So is it morning? Is it night? Is it middle of the day? Yes. Okay. So the time, dusk. Okay, next, is this a fantasy landscape that's happening right, that we, it happens right now? Or is it something that we expect to see in the future or something that's from the past? Yeah, so it could be dystopian future, right? So we'll call it maybe era. <laughs> so dystopian future which gives us a lot of creative license, right, for fantasy. Or we could put it on another planet. So let's put that planet. Is this Earth, <coughs> dystopian future of Earth, or is this a planet with different constellations in the sky? Or is this a landscape of like a floating asteroid in space, right? Or I'll, I'll say planet slash surface. What do you guys think? Should it be Earth? Okay. 
for this earth, but earth in the future. So maybe the, the moon will be broken, or maybe it will be turned into a space station. Ah. Let's see, is this everything we need to go on? Okay, here's the other rule. <coughs> No active vehicles or figures, what we call figurative elements, because this needs to be a background setting that we can later add figures to. We'll be creating fantasy creatures and adding them to it. We don't even want to have things like fire. Why? Well, because fire moves. And it looks weird if fire isn't moving. So later we'll have the option of animating this environment. And that would have like moving fire. So if I'm going to make it stormy, I'm going to make it stormy, but not with like individual raindrops, because they'd be frozen in place. And that limits its use as a background setting. So think of this as the setting for a video game level or for a movie. Right? That's what we're doing. Okay, so now that we've set up our brainstorming, now we go look for reference. And they need to be uh, more than or equal to five references, reference images. And they need to be 10 megapixels or larger. 10 MB. So how do we do that? We go to Google. We go to an image search, and we can be as specific or as general as we like in our search, but we need to modify our results, right, our search terms. So I'm going to create a little folder. I'm going to call this assignment one reference images. And what's the first thing I'm looking for? I can be general. I can say stormy swamp. That might be hoping for too much. Hit return. Lots of nice images of stormy swamps. The problem is I need to go to tools. I go to size and I go larger than and scroll down to 10 MP. Okay. So now what I'm looking for are images that I think have potential. I'm not looking for one big image that then I just stick other things onto. I'm looking for components that are interesting. So swamps, it seems like swamps will always have water, right? And like trees reflecting in them. So this might be useful. I'm gonna right click and open that in a new tab. This is kind of a focal point tree that I might be able to use. Open link in new tab. I'm not going to love reference where it's cut off at the top, right? Because then I'm limited and I have to make mine cut off at the top. But I probably want to show the sky a little bit more. So those are the, the references I'm more interested in. Here's some background swamp, which could be useful. It's nice about swamps, very organic, so I can blend things in together well. But the other problem, the problem with them, the thing that makes them difficult, is there, there's a lot going on. They're very closed in. All right, now I see a lot of swamp. I don't see a lot of stormy sky. I like this foreground here. So that might be another search I do. Okay, so I open them all up in new tabs. What do I do? I go to them, I say view image. And these are large. And then I zoom in and make sure that they're not just terrible. Because even though there are a lot of pixels and they show up in the image search, they might be just really blurry, really terrible photos. <coughs> I am not researching any of these photos. I'm just assuming they are all copyrighted and owned by someone. Right. We'll, we'll get into that with our reading of Chapter 2 and our next question of the day. But if I wanted to, I could research and find only public domain images. Now this one's interesting. It's good focus on the tree itself and around the tree, but then on the edges and in the background is pretty out of focus. And it's a little bit, it has some distortions going on there. 
But since I want to use it for the tree, that's going to work. This one. This one has a lot of sharpening distortions in it. A lot of them. Makes it look like it's a digital painting. But I like the foreground elements, and those are sharp. So as long as I don't use this stuff, <laughs> that should work. So this is kind of introducing yourself to your reference. Here's another little accent tree. It's got some good foreground, good coloring. It's got a boat with people in the background, so that's not going to go into my final, right? Because that's an active figurative element. It's got a lot of room for sky. Yeah, I can make use of that. All right, so next Google search. And I'll, let's just look for storm, storm sky. Why not? It's going to keep the 10 megapixels. I can't have lightning in the background, but I want it to look like lightning can strike at any time. All right, I want something kind of crazy. But also, I don't want clouds that are so, so interesting looking that I expect them to move a lot. And you can decide how dramatic you want it to get. So basically, what I'm showing you is that I'm getting more reference than I need. And I'll show you why. Now I'm going to use these, and this is your homework. I'm going to use these references I collect. And that's your homework. You don't need Photoshop to do this. To find images that will work well. <laughs> and if they make it too hard, just forget it. I didn't like that one anyway. All right, so now you're going to look at your images. And I'm going to look for probably a few more. Some, some gnarled trees might be my next search. And then you're going to view them as large as you can. Well, within reason, this new operating system lets you get them very large. Arrange them all so that you can sketch from them. This becomes what's called your design board. These are your puzzle pieces. And your sketch decides how you're going to connect these puzzle pieces. And I usually say sketch two different sketches. One that is landscape format, longer than it is tall. One that is portrait format, taller than it is wide. Right? And looking at this, I can start sketching a rough composition for my fantasy landscape and then get more reference and keep building it. So, let's probably swap sides here. You're going to do this in your sketchbook. If you want to do it digitally, you can, but I, I recommend doing it in your sketchbook. <coughs> so I have my reference. Now I'm going to sketch. So let's see, this tree, let's put that in my um, portrait format one right here. So I'm going to call that number one tree group. And then I might label that. This is why I do it right from the file. You can organize them the way you want. And then the ones I've used in a sketch, I'll usually label with a color. Okay, then I really like this foreground. Actually, I really like this foreground, that moss. So I'm going to put that in this middle ground here. And it was a stripe for that tree to sit in and the reflection for that tree. But I can create my own reflection. So I'm going to call this number two. Number two, um, mid-ground moss. And I'm going to finish up my sketch in lab hours. But we want to have that when we come to class on Wednesday. Just a vision of some of the reference we found. And then we can always find more reference. The storm clouds I like, I like the look of these, so I'm going to put that up here. Three storm sky. 